Show me one clear verse where Jesus said something along the lines of, I am not God. Show me that verse. If he was so important, if he was, was a son of God, all these prophets would come up and they would have uh, advocate, they would preach about the Jesus, but none of them said any single word of the Jesus. It says that the, the Father is the only true God. Those are words that come out of Jesus' own mouth. What does that say about whether Jesus is divine? You see, you don't even understand, bro. So when the Quran says that Allah saved Jesus from crucifixion, Jesus says that that is satanic. So Jesus is saying that the teachings of the Quran are satanic. Yeah. That man is about the spirit is inside the the man has a spirit of God inside or the man has a spirit of a man inside. So. So the Jesus being as a man has a spirit of a God inside or is a man of inside. That's what I'm asking. So we, we Christians, what we believe yeah, yeah, yeah. is that we believe that the the divine logos, the word of God, <clears throat> that is spoken about as appearing to people in the Old Testament, as appearing that they see the word of God. That's an important thing that lots of Christians miss. The Word of God is seen visually in the Old Testament. Become takes to himself flesh. That he takes to himself a human nature. So he is fully God and he is fully divine. We say God-man. So it's not that a man has, has been sort of received a, 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 a divine spirit that has possessed him. It is that from the moment of his, his conception, he is both God and man. So, he, so he is a man, but he is a God as well, at the same time. Fully and completely. His flesh is a man, right? So fully yeah, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's his flesh, yeah. So he is a God and he is a man as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's what we believe. So when we see the God is one, so it means there was a one God who was in the up sky, there was a one God down there, and there was a one God in the Holy Spirit. So they were split into three. No, that's not what we believe at all. You feel me? So, so we Christians believe that there's only one God. That God is one within himself. God says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. So we can't divide God like you've suggested. We can't do that. That's not what we believe. But you said that you no, said that listen. We can't divide God. If ever we try to describe God by implying division, we, we're wrong. We've got it wrong. Furthermore, we can't say that there are three gods because the Bible is clear. That I am the Lord thy God and there is no other. I know of no other God, God says in Isaiah. So there is only one God, God is one within himself, so he's indivisible. And, and the third point is that even if, even if there were millions of gods, we should only worship one God. So we should only worship one God, there is only one God and God is not divisible. But the Bible also teaches that the Father is God, the Son is God and the Holy Spirit is God. So this is not three gods or one God divided into three. This is one God who exists as the person of the Father, the person of the Son and the person of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what we believe. That's what I'm trying to say that because when the Jesus was here, clearly he was speaking to someone at the Abu Quran. And he said, yes. that, oh, oh, He was speaking oh, oh, to the Father. Yeah, to the Father. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I say. If you say them as a complete one, yes. then who was he speaking? There was someone up there. Yeah, the Father. The Son was speaking That's to the what Father. I'm saying. You're splitting it up. You're saying no, it's, that is a... Yeah, so, so the thing is, this is the, there's no contradiction here. Because it, 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 the, the, the distinction is in a different category to the unity. So that, that's the thing that you've got to get. It's like you, you're standing in three-dimensional space now. You've got the x-axis, you've got the y-axis, and you've got the z-axis. We can distinguish between the three axes, but each one of them is identically a dimension, and we experience them as one thing. We understand them to be one thing. 
but that doesn't stop us making distinctions between the dimensions. So if something is unified in one sense, it doesn't exclude it from being distinct in another. When you say dimensions, that S itself says three dimensions. There is one dimension, we say one dimension. S itself says you are plural using it. And think as an example of me, I am the one person. So what, that's what I'm saying. Coming back at your example, Jesus was as a God, as a man, as a God. Yeah. Clearly he was speaking someone. So, so the he, Father. So the Father. So that's what I'm saying. When he was speaking someone, who was he? Because you clearly, I take your word, he was a God. If I don't say that, that will annoy you. So I'm taking your word. Okay. So Not a God. We did. I didn't say a God. No one heard me say a God, I promise you. I said God. So when you say God and you take in of the A, A means it's always come as a singular. So when you take exactly. A away from it, that singularity, the God singularity, you take in of it. No, you, you've you misunderstood. Plural, no, you... I say A, I, I, I hear your point. I I hear your point. I heard your point. I heard your point. I heard your point. But, but what you didn't hear was what I said prior to this. So I'll say it again. That if, that, that if something is unified in one category, but distinct in another, and I use the example of three dimensions, each, di each is a dimension. They are the same in one category. Dimensions, S at the end. The three-dimensional space. Let, allow, me, allow me, if we're going to start interrupting one another, I'll start interrupting you. So three the three dimensions the x the y and the z axes have all the same properties behave in the same ways are experienced as one thing they are one thing we stand in three dimensional space but we can make distinctions in that space that is singular that is one there's only one space around you but you can make distinctions within that space, the X, the Y, and the Z axes. The, the thing that you're missing is that unity in one, in one category doesn't mean that something can't be plural in another category. We say that God is one in the category of his divinity, in the category of his essence. We say that God is three in the category of person. Or there's three categories of persons. There's, there's three persons, not three categories of persons. There's one category of person. There's three persons within that category. There's one category of God, and there's only one God in that category. Because that's what I'm saying. When you created three persons, three persons... We didn't create three persons. How I can say that there is a three person in one category? How, how, what did you say? So I, okay. So, we'll, we'll use the example of three-dimensional space again. We are standing in one space. You agree, you're stood in one space, right? You're not stood in three spaces right now, are you? Right. So we agree that space is singular. But we also agree that we can distinguish between the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis in that one space. Agreed? Right. So. Unity in one category, space, does not exclude the idea of plurality in another category, the idea of dimension. In a similar way, God is one category, and there is only one God in that category. But persons is another category, and in terms of our description of one God, there are three persons in that category. The one does not exclude or contradict the other. Three person in a category. Of person. Yes, that's you said, three person in a category. But that's something I'm saying. If that Jesus, as a God, as a God, down there, three person, was there another God at that the same time somewhere? No, because you didn't listen, so I'll say it again. Listen. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I know you. I, I you believe. Speak and I tell you more. Shh, shh. You, you want to continue speaking, or shall I correct you? Because if I say you, and then you correct me, if I'm clear. Okay. I know. So you. So you, what you've got to understand. Yeah. Separate in your mind the category of divinity from the category of person. I.e., separate what something is. The question of what something is from the question of who something is. Okay? We all share in a common humanity. 
I don't look at you and say you're a monkey. You don't look at me and say I'm a dog. I mean, the Quran says that we're like dumb animals, but we're not talking about the Quran. We're talking about you, and I know you're a more noble person than your Quran. Now, in, in terms of what we are, we are the same. But in the terms of who we are, we are different. You are a different who to me, but we're the same what. And so in God, there is only one what. There's only one God. And there's only, there, there can't be any other gods in that category because it's unique. It, it's species unique. But in the category of persons, when we're talking about God, there are three. And this doesn't involve a contradiction any more than saying that we have a common humanity involves a contradiction in saying that we're different people. The reason is because when we talk about the God, this is something like, you know, we talk about omniscient, omniscient, omnipotent in every characteristics he has. So now when you distribute that into three person, that is where the problem is. Right? The reason is because Jesus, if himself was a God, then he would say when he's been asked about, the, uh, by, by myself, I can't do anything. Yep. My only God. So he would say, by myself, I can't do anything, but I have a divine characters inside me which I can execute it but he never said when he's been asked that what is the hour what is the uh, hour when's the judgment day will come he say I don't know only father knows. he could say that if the hour I don't know but there is a divine characteristics inside me which I can execute but I don't execute that there is nothing where he triggered his divine his divine ability anywhere in point of time he was always saying only father can do by myself I can't do anything only father and he was the unity. Say, and his, it's all right. And, and what, what he said. I've heard all this before yeah, I know a million saying. times. Yeah. So what he's trying to say that only one that uh, when he's been uh, cross, he was saying that, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh, why did you forsake me? He could say, oh myself, the divinity inside me. Why I forsake myself? Can, can I can I reply? Thank you. Yes, please. please, please. So please. once again, what you've done is you've conflate person with divinity. You've tried to conflate it, and I've made very clear that these are distinct categories. And you've once again tried to conflate the person of the Father and the person of the Son. And if you, you've tried to do that via their divinity, and you've tried to say, well, if Jesus is God, he wouldn't say, you know, Eloi, Eloi, la, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He would say, why have I forsaken myself? So you've conflated the Father with the Son which means you're arguing against a straw man, you're not arguing against Christianity. You did it again when you said, Jesus said, of myself I can do nothing, but I do all things through the Father, or by, or by the Father's leave. I, I don't remember the exact wording. JC, make sure you put up the verses that we're quoting, right? But that again conflates the Father with the Son. But we started the conversation acknowledging that the Father was not the Son, and the Son was not the Father. So your argument conflates what doesn't need to be conflated. We Christians believe that when God acts, Father, Son and Holy Spirit acts. So when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, the Bible teaches the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ raised himself from the dead. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So when we say, so Jesus was not wrong to say, of myself, I can do nothing. Because everything that the son does, he does because he sees the father doing it. And everything that the father does, the son does. But what man on earth can say that he does everything that God does? You see, you've undone your own argument. Jesus, by saying that of myself, I can do nothing, except that by, I do it by the Father, and everything the Father does, I do, because that's in the same verse, I think, I think it's in the same chapter. Jesus is saying, as God does in heaven, I do on earth. So Jesus is saying that he is, and no human being can say that. Muhammad never said it, you never said that one, within the same chapter. So you're picking and choosing lines, but you're not reading the whole chapter of the passages. When Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's referring to a prophecy that was written hundreds of years before Jesus' birth. Sorry, a thousand years before Jesus' birth. 
and a hundred years, hundreds of years before crucifixion was even invented. And that is a proof, a prophetic proof of the crucifixion. If the crucifixion happened, Islam is false because Islam said the crucifixion didn't happen. So Christ is quoting a prophecy about his crucifixion. And being a Jew, he's expressing the agony of... He's drawing it, but he's also expressing the anguish of crucifixion like any human being would. This tree is equal to one. What do you mean by that? Because I'm not sure what you mean. But one These These three persons are equal to three persons, but they share in one divine nature. These three persons, the divine is one, the God is one. The divinity is one, yes. The, the God, God is one. God is one, yes. Okay. So, so these three, that's, these three yes. is equal to one. No, 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 no. That's just bad mathematics. Okay. You, 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 you're using bad mathematics. Three is equal to three. The three persons are equal to three persons. But what they are is singular. One, they share in one nature, the same nature. In the same way that the three dimensions X, Y and Z are equal to three dimensions X, Y and Z, but they're one space. So you mean say that this whole universe three dimension and there is a one there, one here and one here. I'm using, I'm trying to get you to see that you can have plurality in one category while unity in another category. A category is a, a, a term that we use to describe something. Like tree is a category, plant is a category. Plant is a category, but there are many kinds of plant. So you can have plurality in a, a, as a, a subset of another category. So that's what I'm saying, okay. Because what I, what I was trying to say to you, because if we give a complete divinity, uh, okay, okay, if we give Jesus as a person, as a divinity. As a, Not a divinity. Okay, uh, a God. Not a God. 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 Okay. By love, take it, aren't you, when you take it off ah, from inside, you yourself saying there is another God apart from him. No. Because that's why you're taking A from inside. But that's what I'm saying. When no, not at all. When you say N apple, there is a one apple. When we say a tree, there is a one tree. So when you say... But we don't say a God. We say a person. And that's what you're not listening to. No, that's what I heard you. You say so a person... Stop, so stop changing my words then. No, but you say a person plus God. At, at, no, at, at no point did I say a God. I've, those no, words have never come out of my I mouth. Say, I say a person and God. A person and God. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. A person and God in a flesh. In a flesh. In a flesh. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I will let you speak. You will speak more and I will speak only one minute. What I'm trying to say, when you take in off, when you say that a person and God, there is no any one point where Jesus triggered a God inside of him. He was No, I, there's no a God inside of him. You no, I never said a God. God in a f flesh. You didn't say God in a flesh. You said you I said did not say a God. God. I and never said a God. Never. Never once did I say a God. Are you referring to the divine power? What I'm saying, Jesus in a flesh is a God. Is is God? Is God? Right. Let me let me let me ask you this question, okay? Because. It, it's clear to me that you, you aren't studying the Bible. You haven't picked up a Bible. Have you picked up a Bible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Genesis to Revelation, I have read Okay. It. Right, you've read it from Genesis to Re Revelation. Who was it who gave the Sabbath? <laughs> Who's the Lord of the Sabbath? Sabbath is a, a Jewish practice. Yep. Which it, it was, uh, they were not doing anything. They were praying. You say Lord of the Sabbath. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, that, that's what the Sabbath is. Who commanded it? I think it comes from the Moses time. Yeah, but who commanded the keeping of the Sabbath? Jesus. Jesus said, I came for the fulfillment of the commandments. No, that, no. Who, who gave the, the, the command to keep the Sabbath to Moses? Who gave that commandment to Moses? 
to keep the Sabbath in the Ten Commandments is we have to keep the Sabbath. Who gave that to Moses? I don't have that knowledge. Okay, so listen to me, bro. If you can't answer a basic question like that, I'm telling you, you don't understand the Bible. That was a really basic question. I guarantee lots of people who are watching this on camera, when I said, who commanded Moses to keep the Sabbath, they would have known it was God. And the fact that, that yeah, yeah, oh wait, now, now you know. That, that of course it was God. So now let me ask you this question, logically. Who then is the Lord of the Sabbath? If God commanded that Lord is everything. Who is the Lord of the Sabbath? Who, who, is, who is the Lord over the Sabbath? Sabbath is a practice, a ritual. <laughs> no, that's not the question. The question is, who is the Lord of the Sabbath? Like, uh, order that you say God. The Lord, the ruler of the Sabbath, the sovereign over the Sabbath. Who is the Lord of the Sabbath? God. God. Right, listen to this. This is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, reading from verse 23. And it happened that as he, Jesus, was passing through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples began to make their way along while picking the heads of grain, the Pharisees were saying to him, Luke, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he, Jesus said, have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions became hungry, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for anyone to eat except the priests. And he also gave it to those who were with him. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. The Son of Man is Jesus' favorite way of referring him to himself. So let's read that same sentence again, but we'll just insert Jesus. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So Jesus is the Lord even of the Sabbath. If Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, who is Jesus? God. When I talk to you, where is the Jesus being as a person triggered God attributes? That's something you brought it in here. When I was keep saying, keep saying, that was something you brought it now that he was saying that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Right, so are you, are you saying that Jesus had the right to call himself Lord of the Sabbath? Can you call yourself the Lord of the Sabbath? Why not? No, answer my question. Why can't you call yourself Lord of the Sabbath? Answer my question. Why can't you call yourself Lord of the Sabbath? I am saying, being saying that Lord of the Sabbath is not enough. Show me in the Bible where it is. Jesus say, I am a Lord. You always will be bringing another sentence. Sorry, answer my question. Why can't, can you say that you are the Lord of the Sabbath? Why not? Because I, uh, I don't never know that who is the uh, Sabbath and uh, God is the one who is just uh, Sabbath. Uh, yes, yeah, so Let, Let's Lord. try again because you've, you, you, you flummoxed the answer. Yeah, yeah. Answer me clearly. I, I don't understand what you just yeah, said. It wasn't even. It was barely understandable English. You why you 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 wouldn't call yourself Lord of the Sabbath? No, no, I won't. Why not? Neither the Jesus Jesus is the Lord. Of answer the, Sabbath. the question yeah. I asked. Answer the question I asked. Yeah, yeah. You just said you would not call yourself Lord of the Sabbath. This is now the fifth time I've asked you this question. Try answering my question. Why would you not call yourself Lord of the Sabbath? Because I'm not the Lord of the Sabbath. That's why I'm... Who is the Lord of the Sabbath? God Allah. Right. So when Jesus says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath, what is he calling himself? The reason Jesus never said that. I'll just read it to you again then. Right? So Jesus said, now remember, Son of Man is Jesus' favorite way to refer to himself. Favorite way to refer to himself is Son of Man. He uses it all the time in all the Gospels, talking about himself. He says, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, the Son of Man. And he's talking about him. And then there's one passage in the same Gospel where people are talking to him and he refers to himself very clearly as the Son of Man returning in judgment. Listen, Jesus said, 
the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now let's do this very slowly, because obviously you don't listen. Je who did Jesus just say is the Lord of the Sabbath? The God. The God. And what is Jesus' way of referring to himself? The Son of Man. And it says, so the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Can I say something? Yeah, about this passage. There is a, this particular passage, because that's something said. The Bible also says that uh, uh, about different other messengers, different things like uh, Solomon, David and other things. So we don't say these things has been said because it's been translation. So the translation... This is a faithful rendering of the Greek. The reason the word son, we have the objection for me. This is the objection. I have the objection for son and father as well. But I'm just keep rolling. No, but your argument is about translation. There's, there's no question that this is the correct way to translate that passage. From the Greek and Greek from Aramaic, so I don't no, know the, no, it was it. never written in Aramaic. Because it was written in Greek. The reason, the, re, the particular thing would be that if the Jesus come forward being as a God in one sentence, that will nullify. But we see in the John's, uh, the John seven thirteen, which Jesus says the true God is there. So now let me finish one one minute. If there is an implicit statement, you can't overrule explicit statement with the implicit statement. There is an explicit statement over... One who understands where the Sabbath comes from and who is the Lord of the Sabbath knows that that is God. So if Jesus says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath, he is explicitly stating that he is God. That's and explicit. You, you brought a one context. I can bring a thousand of contexts inside of the Bible, which Jesus says by me nothing. Your Lord is Lord is one. He was worshiping on that God. We've I already, we've know. already heard, we've already dealt with this. Yes, yeah, so, but you bring in this up, so I will bring that up because yeah. for me that is the explicit statement. That is the you can't overrule from the implicit statement. Sorry, what, 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 what do you think when Jesus says the old that the, you Father are the only true God? What do you think that that is a statement about Jesus' divinity? Your Father is the only true God. Yeah. So well, the true God is the up there. It says that the, the Father is the only true God. Those are words that come out of Jesus' own mouth. What does that say about whether Jesus is divine? That's what I want to mean. You see, you don't even understand, bro. Like, just because Jesus says that the Father is God, doesn't mean that Jesus can't also be the same God. Exactly, you are right. Thank if, you. If Jesus say, I am a God myself as well, in a Bible, that will mitigate all the questions. So if there he, is nothing inside if he was worshipped, if he was worshipped like God was worshipped, would that mean that he is God? He was worshipping to one God. No, answer my there question. Time, in the Bible it says there was a time, the book you gave it to me, I read that, there was a time when Jesus was going into the mountain and all night praying to one God. Answer my question, because you do really bad at answering questions. If Jesus was worshipped like God, would he be God? If Jesus was worshipped like a God inside the, uh, that, that's what I'm right. saying. So let me, let me read the passage, because here's the passage that you misquoted. And sadly, Muslims do this. And, and all through this argument, that's all you've done. You've taken three or four words from this verse, three or four words from that verse, and you've ignored, and you have, and you have ignored the verse, and you have ignored the context of the verse, and you have also ignored clear statements where Jesus says He is God. But let me, let me just, let me read the verse that you're trying to abuse, because you are abusing it. Listen, listen. Are you listening? No, no, no. You are very polite. You are very polite but you are abusing verses in the Bible. You are, because you're quoting them out of the context. Listen, this is what Jesus actually says in context. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. So there's a transaction between the Father and the Son, mutual glorification. Even as you gave him all or gave him authority over all flesh. So Jesus is claiming that he has authority over all of you, everyone who can hear my voice, over all flesh. No man can say that, all flesh. That to all whom you have given him, so the Father has given you all to Jesus, 
he may give eternal life. Listen to that. Jesus just said that Jesus gives eternal life. What human being can say that they can give you eternal life? That's a gift that only God can do. Listen more. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Now tell me, did Jesus exist before the rest of creation? I want you to deal with this verse. There's a, no, I'm asking a verse from the question. I'm asking a question from the verse. Jesus claims to have existed before creation. Do you believe Jesus existed before creation? Yeah. Everyone was created at one point of time, which is called at the back of the Adam. So you were even existed before uh, G, uh, before time. He was. Everyone was before. Oh, well, we all existed before time. Everyone. Was, I tell you. We're all eternal. But did we share in the glory of God? Let me speak. Let me speak. Yeah, go on. Let me in speak. In the Quran, Allah says, at the back of the Adam, He created His offspring, and we ask them, who was your Lord? Quran says, every one of you, everyone in here. Quran says, everyone says, oh Lord, Allah, you are our Lord. Allah says, so that I took the testimony from you. So tomorrow you don't say that that you there wasn't any. He didn't answer my question. I answer you that question. No, 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 no. No, no. I'll answer. I'll ask it again because you didn't answer my question. Jesus said that he existed before creation. So that's why the creation means this creation before he was existed. No, no, you didn't understand. Before the world. Yeah, but, but answer, answer my question. Do, no, because I ask you one question and then you answer a completely different question. Was Adam created? Because your understanding of this passage is wrong. You have to un understand the passage from the whole Bible. The Bible itself explicitly, that's what I'm trying to say. When you have a something, I can understand. I don't mind it that you are understanding that. I don't mind it. But what I'm trying to understand, there are explicit uh, verses in which uh, uh, Jesus do not claim divinity. I can understand again. You says that I understand that Jesus was before creation. But what I'm saying, this explicit statement overrule this one and then you have to understand. Please, brother, let me reply. And, and when you have to understand in a big picture. So when I take your this verses, then I can understand it with this passage. Which can I, I reply now? You, yeah. Can I reply? Uh, no offense, but we had to tell you that God was the one who was the Lord of the Sabbath. You didn't even know that very basic question. You, no, no, one second, one second. You didn't even know that. So the idea that now you can try to present yourself to this audience... One, one, one second. Now, now, now... You speak seven, eight minutes. When I speak, everyone is What I'm trying to say and about... So, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. One, I'm, I'm asking... You, you said... Can, can I reply? Can I reply to what you said? Well, the thing is, the thing is, he's trying to say, you've got to understand it in its entire context. This guy didn't even know that God was the one that instituted the Sabbath. That's a basic 101 question. So you can't present yourself as some biblical scholar. Every messenger says that, like a prophet says in the Quran, that God says in the Quran, that if you want to obey me, you have to obey the messenger. So every messenger, even the Jesus, Moses, David, every messenger has come with this claim that, uh, uh, that if you want to uh, obey, you have to obey. Now come to this, that's the Sabbath. I didn't know what was written in the, but I know in the Bible, there is a, in the Quran, there is a Sabbath. And Quran says that Allah give that Moses. But if you, when you ask me, I thought maybe you asked me about the, which you are. You ask me about the Bible, and in the Bible I don't know who was the giver. Right, let, 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 so I can talk about the Quran, can, can, but can, I don't know. About exactly, the Bible. you don't know. Don't so, know Bible, but here yes, you are, yes, here yes. you are, trying to say that the passage that shows that Jesus is an eternal being 
that existed before creation. Your statement was, well, you've got to understand it in the entire context. And Jesus gives explicit statements where he says he is not divine. So my challenge to you, right, since you've obfuscated and dodged this question, I'm going to ask to you again, right, Jesus says that he existed before the world. Let me finish, let me finish. Jesus is saying that he existed before the world was. He's also saying that before the world was, he was being glorified with the Father. He was sharing in the worship of the Father. Now, my questions to you are twofold. One, which other prophet claimed to be glorified with God before creation? Show me which other prophet said that. Secondly, show me one clear verse where Jesus said something along the lines of, I am not God. Show me that verse. My first question about the before and before time. Maybe it'll help you just to see the words. Yeah, yeah, I know that is there. So the before time is God. The Bible also say about the time as well. Genesis. Genesis tells you that when the creation was, what was the before creation? No, it doesn't. So, this, this Genesis 1 was a created before it was the world, the world was God, and the world was with God. So that's everything it says. Over there, that was the time when the, it has been said that there was a me and there was a Jesus. But there wasn't any Jesus word, there wasn't anything. That's what I'm saying. Your understanding of these particular words is wrong. Because if you go in a Bible, there are a Bible in John which says about there was a word, the word was God, the word was God. It was a particular time when it has been referred as a Jesus. Most okay, Abraham came, never said Jesus. Moses came, never said Jesus. David came, never said Jesus. Salman came, never said Jesus. So many prophets came, never word come of the Jesus. If he was so important, if he was, was a son of God, all these prophets would come up and they would have uh, advocate, they would preach about the Jesus, but none of them said any single word of the Jesus. Even when the Jesus come, he was himself says that I'm the only prophet. So what that's what I'm understanding, that what you are understanding about the whole context is wrong. And, that, and even in the Bible it says, I am not God. If you say, if someone say, I am, he is a God, he has to claim it, not like I, I do, wouldn't claim that I'm not a God, because everyone knows I'm not a God. I will be only saying I am not a God with someone claiming me a God. And that's the thing. So your conception, your understanding, is or your philosophy about claiming something is wrong. Sorry, what was the second fold I forgot? You have said there are two tentacles of this question. I forgot that. So, so my so, first question was, which other prophet said that he was glorified with God before creation? And the second one? Which we didn't hear an answer to. And the second one was, show me where Jesus says... In, in words to this effect, I am not God. Can I reply now? Can I reply now? Can I reply now? Basically, in summary, what he said is, I can't show you any verse where Jesus said, I am not God. But I have shown you an explicit verse where Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And the Old Testament is clear that the Lord of the Sabbath is Yahweh. Jesus makes it clear that he was glorified before creation. And the brother deliberately or accidentally obfuscates, I can't really make my mind up, because he's trying to say, he's trying to make an argument that includes creation about a statement that deliberately excludes creation. When Jesus said, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. That world there in the Greek means everything. It means creation, means the cosmos, means everything you can think of. That means that it is before creation. All of his arguments include creation. So he's making an argument that includes creation about a statement that excludes it. Now, brother, have some humility. You're just biblically illiterate. You said that the word of Jesus Christ, that Christ is referred to as the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
and you said that this was the word of a particular time. No, ladies and gentlemen, the word that John is referring to in John chapter 1 is the word that is referred to in the Old Testament. I read, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. So he's talking about the word of the Lord. But he answered, I did not call my son. That this, so that, yeah, Samuel is laying down and he hears the Lord call to him, Eli, Eli. And he runs, sorry, Samuel hears the words of the Lord saying, Samuel, Samuel, and he runs to Eli and he says, here I am as you called me. And this happens three times. And Eli recognizes God is speaking to him. So God is speaking to him and is described as the word of the Lord. Then the Lord came and stood and called at, as at other times. So the word of the Lord appears to Samuel. That word of the Lord is a theme that you can follow through the Old Testament. The word of the Lord is seen, not just heard, seen personable in a personable way so when john says in the john gospel of one in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning and then says and the word became flesh it's talking about the word that he's talked about in the old testament this is an eternal word a divine figure Perfect. you sim yes you simply don't know the bible I will again take notes of what I am trying to say to you. When you go to the beginning of time, the beginning of time, when you say all these things, then it was very pertinent time when it has been told that the Jesus will be coming, or the Jesus is the person, or the Jesus is the one. Nothing is mentioned. And then there are prophets come before that, like Noah, Adam, and uh, Abraham, Jesus, uh, sorry, Isaac, Ishmael, uh, Moses. All these prophets have just somehow didn't mention Jesus at all. Oh, and about the yes, well. listen, about the uh, word of God, Quran didn't say, or Quran don't deny the word of God, Kalimatullah, which Allah says that is the, is the word of God, but and that was called God is good. But that comes when that time period being when he was being raised as a messenger, as a Jesus being as a raised as a messenger, that was the prophet, that was the time when it's come. But before that, that's what I'm saying. If God tells about himself right from the beginning every prophet when it comes to that like prophet comes adam noah abraham jesus isaac god tells about themselves from the, if the jesus was god that's what i'm saying these all prophets must have mentioned these uh, uh these uh, the, the name of the jesus or, or something uh, about the jesus but nothing has been mentioned and that's what i'm saying that and jesus what says about inside the bible also claim being as a man so when you when you look into all these aspects when you read the bible it completely says that the explicit statement somehow occupy the implicit statements okay so the, the the truth is you've got the right rhetoric but you've got zero evidence i asked you for a clear statement where jesus said i am not god you couldn't offer one we've discussed 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 the fact, we've discussed the fact that Jesus claims divine titles, he claims to be the Lord of the Sabbath, and he claims divine attributes because he claims to have existed before creation and to be, be glorified with the Father. And we started off the conversation where Jesus commands you to honor him like you honor the Father with worship. And we discussed that. So we've got these really explicit statements where Jesus claims divine titles, claims divine attributes, demands your worship, and then he's saying that they're not explicit. How much more explicit do we need to have? Furthermore, furthermore, Jesus saying that he is a man and pointing out that Jesus is a man does not contradict anything that we Christians believe in. We Christians believe that Jesus was fully man. That's not in dispute. We're not arguing that Jesus wasn't a man. 
That's not an argument. So to point out to us what we believe doesn't contradict what we believe. The argument is, is Jesus divine? Now, you, I'm going to finish on this. One of the questions that I will be fair, I didn't get around to answering that you asked me, is to show me where Jesus demonstrates divine power. So I'm going to show it to you now. Bear with me one second. So, in uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 35. Now, I'll just preface this that by saying that the Quran says that when Allah wills for a thing to happen, He merely says to it, Be, and it is. That's what the Quran says, doesn't it? Right. Now listen to this. On that day when evening came, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. That's Jesus speaking. Leaving the crowd, they, the apostles, took him, Jesus, along with them in the boat, just as Jesus was. And other boats were with Jesus. And there arose a fierce gale of wind and waves were breaking over the boats so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and he rebuked the wind and the sea. Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. Jesus merely said to nature, be, and it was. So you asked me to show where Christ demonstrates his divine power. That was one question in this discussion I never got around to answering, and now I've answered it. So make what your final point and then we'll stop. In an amicable way, we don't want to just yeah. bad heart. You just presented your arguments, I presented. Neither you are a prophet nor I am a prophet. We are all here to be at some point. We have no competition at all. He is my friend, I just tell her and we will be friends. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. So there is no any bad heart for each other. You are all here to understand and reach to the point. You have your own brain and you have your based on that you can research. What I'm now about this miracle. Quran doesn't deny that Jesus performed miracles more than Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Quran says that Jesus raised the dead from the world. We is in Allah from the from the order of Allah. He was making a uh, bird through a clay. All right. And then that bird was flying. Again, become a point, God willing, bro. Yeah. It's lovely to see you. I'm you. sorry, yeah. I was not letting you jump in. All right. I just wanted to try and follow a line of Yeah, it's going to be posted. Yeah. All right. God bless. Peace be with you, bro. What did you uh, save and what did you uh, eat at home? So he was telling you he was performing miracles, but this all miracles was assisted by the help of Allah. Every, everyone is the same. Jesus in, himself says in the Bible, by my fault I do nothing, only God can help me. So what I'm saying, I concluded this one, because what I'm saying, I understand. Bob says there are explicit for the one Bob just described what God is explicit. What I am described inside the Bible for me, that is the explicit verses. Now I leave that on you guys. You are what well, but what I would say to what what I would say to you. Yeah. What 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 I would say to you though, and what I would say to anyone who watches this, if you've got to realize that that, that Muslims are far better equipped to evangelize you, to do dawah than you are to evangelize them. And that's because within the church, we aren't teaching, we aren't, we aren't teaching apologetics. Every single argument that this brother has used, every single one is a completely scripted argument. It's totally scripted. His very statements that he's misquoted a passage again, even though earlier in the conversation, he'd already quoted that and we corrected him and he's quoted it again at the end because he knows some people in the audience weren't here when we corrected him earlier. This idea that Jesus said, I of myself can do nothing. That's a completely Trinitarian statement because Father, Son and Holy Spirit act together. So when Jesus is performing a miracle, the Father and the Holy Spirit are performing a miracle. So Jesus is right to say, I of myself can do nothing. But Jesus also said that he gives eternal life. Jesus also said that he raises himself from death. He said, 
I lay down my life and I will take it up again. Jesus said that I give eternal life. Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus said, honor me as you honor God. Honor me as you honor Allah. Jesus said that, um, Jesus said also, I, well, I mean, countless other examples. Jesus commands like God, be and it is. The reality is that, that until you approach intellectually this investigation and work past the scripted arguments and actually decide to pick up the Bible and read it, not just looking at the few words that the Dawa script tells you to look at, but actually reading the passages and looking at all the words and what all the words say, you will have never argued against Christianity and only ever against a strawman. Wait, was it, I'm going to stop now. No, but let me speak for one minute at least. Well, you just concluded, you concluded prior. Yes, yes. I, first of all, I never, re, I never see the Dawa team. I don't know who Dawa. I know the by name, Ali Dawa and all these ones, but I never see. I always watch the soap one. Another thing which I'm trying to say that I take all your words, but how is that? I'm, I'm leaving that on you. All you just say, right? He said. But when it's when Jesus was in a cross, he didn't trigger his divinity. He didn't really trigger his divinity. Though he was a man, but you yourself that he. He was came to die, bro. Why would he? Why would he trigger his divinity when he came to die? So why? Why do you say that it is okay? So if let's say he was come to die, if you were there, would you help him to die or would you try to save him? No, one second, one second. Jesus came to die. Okay. A good disciple of Jesus would not get in the way, so we wouldn't get in the way of Jesus. And Jesus himself rebukes the Quran and rebukes Islam because when he prophesied about the Son of Man being taken captive and being scourged and whipped and crucified and rising on the third day, Peter said to him, Lord, don't be, Lord, let it not be unto you. In other words, Peter objected to that idea and said that it was unworthy of him that this should happen to him. And Jesus said, get ye behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things of God, but of men. So when the Quran says that Allah saved Jesus from crucifixion, Jesus says that that is satanic. So Jesus is saying that the teachings of the Quran are satanic. They are not the same message. But you, you started this whole conversation by saying that Muhammad gave the same message as Jesus. Jesus said he came to be crucified and that anyone who said differently was speaking the words of Satan and the Quran and Muhammad said that Jesus was saved from crucifixion. So Jesus is saying Muhammad's teachings are satanic. Jesus being as a cross when he's asking for help from God doesn't look like that he is fulfilling his prophecy. Where, where does he say, where does he, where does he appeal? Sorry, where does, where does he appeal, where does he appeal for help from the cross? Why did you forsake me? Oh God, no, no, no. Oh Lord, why did you where, where does he say, where does he say, God, get me off the cross? Why did you forsake me? What does that mean? It doesn't, what it means, you tell me, you yeah, tell I'll tell you what it means. I'll tell you what it means. It means that the man is wrapped in absolute agony and pain and suffering. And he is speaking like a man soaked in the scripture of the Old Testament. And he uses the words of a prophecy prophesying his crucifixion a thousand years before it happens and 600 years before crucifixion is even that. invented to express the pain he is feeling. But he didn't mention that over there. He could say, oh God, oh, why did you forsake me? But that's fine because it's a for, for, for prophecy, I have to die. He, didn't he literally that. prophesizes before his crucifixion that he has come for the purpose of crucifixion and he rebukes anyone who tries to get in the way of that as being satanic. Thank you. All right. Bro, this is for you. Please. The next time I the next time the next time the next the next time I talk the next time I talk to you. Please pick up the Bible and read it. Have you got a Bible at home? Yes, I do have. Right. You owe it to me to to read it. To read it. All right. Next time when we talk about, we will talk about slavery. We will talk about the polygamy, polygamy and these are. No, I want to talk about. I want to talk about the the, the 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 Islamic description of God. The next time we talk.
Okay, the next time we talk, the Islamic description of God. Okay, right.